Steve, I want to ask you is, you know, you, you mentioned earlier that algae is, is basically the new egg. Can you talk about how algae is really tied into agriculture? Yeah, so what algae are are simply photosynthetic organisms growing in water. So they're plants that are growing in water. So all agriculture is plants and growing it at large scale. That's what agriculture is. And then to produce something we want. And that something can either be food, it can be a fiber, it can be an animal feed, you name it. And algae can do all of those things. And we already use them now. We already eat algae. We already use it for nutraceuticals. Uh, we don't make any fiber out of it that I know, but I'm sure we could. So what we're saying is, because there are so many people on the planet, we've sort of tapped out. We, we've reached our limit of what we can do with terrestrial agriculture and fresh water. We need new you know, sources. We need new revenue streams coming in for agriculture. And this is one of them. And so it's one of them that won't compete with existing agriculture. And that's the most important thing. So in terms of, of using algae for fuel, yeah. um, I know you talk about you've looked at thousands of strains of algae. What kind of characteristics are you looking for in terms of, of of that conversion between algae to, to, to biodiesel or ethanol, whatever it may be. So, so, so what we're looking at in algae is exactly what they worry about in agriculture, which is four things. So one, it's growth rate, it's the product you're making, and it's crop protection, and it's harvestability. So that is exactly the same whether you're talking about corn or soybean or anything else, we have the exact same problems in agriculture. So when we grow up a field of algae, we want to make sure it grows fast, productivity, we want to make sure it produces high amounts of lipid product profile. We want to make sure that fungus and bacteria and rotifers don't get in and eat it. That's crop protection. And then we want to harvest it as cheap as we can. If we had right now a way to harvest algae as cheap as we can harvest corn or rice, we, it would already be game over. We, we would already be producing vast quantities. So, so what do you think the timeline is for seeing vast quantities of, of algae fuel, based fuel, in our in our transportation system. Well, so, so we have two challenges there. One is biological. We have to get crop protection to work better, and we have to figure out harvestability. We have to get these guys harvest cheap. So those are technologies that I think are three to four years, five years away. But once we reach those things, then we have to go to scale. You know, in this country, it took us 100 years to get to the scale we're at now in agriculture. It's not going to take us 100 years to get to that scale in algae because the need is much greater right now. We sort of slowly built up to that as our population increased. Well, our population's here now and we're running out of fuel. So we're going to get to that much quicker, but it's still an enormous process. I mean, a million acres of land into new production, that takes a while to build it out. So my guess is three years, five years from now, we'll have all the feasibility studies done. We'll have several hundred acres under production, maybe a thousand acres under production. We'll be making a million gallons of fuel per year. We'll know what the economics is, and if it looks good, then in very rapid succession, I think we will add a million acres a year for the next 20 years. So my last question is, from a funding perspective, you know, if we really want to see the fruition of algae fuel, what is it going to take? Well, I think if you look at the, at the sugarcane ethanol industry down in Brazil, that took 25 years and about $8 billion to bring that on. Um, obviously, we're going to have to do this quicker. We don't have 25 years, I don't think, because our fuel is running out quicker than that. But I think the numbers probably are similar. I think it's probably a $10 billion investment over the next 10 years that will be there. And, and as somebody pointed out earlier, you know, we're spending a billion dollars a day to send out to foreign countries to buy their oil from them. So a $10 billion investment is a week and a half worth of what we spend. It's just 